<laughs> wait, what? Hey, this is the Haha, ha, Wait, What? podcast with Mandy Brooke. I'm an entertainer, content creator, and musician. You may know me from my song parodies and funny antics on Instagram and TikTok. On my podcast, we try to make sense of the confusing parts of life because literally we're all winging it and have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> and that's totally okay. So relax, grab a glass of wine, and let's chat. Hey, friend. I hope you're feeling grounded and gorgeous today, and if you're feeling chaotic and cozy like me, then that's fine too. Since the new year is approaching, today we're going to chat about setting intentions for the new year. Because fuck resolutions, they never work for me. You know the deal. We promise ourselves we're going to work out three times a week and lose 30 pounds by summertime, and then by January 7th, we're so mentally exhausted from the resolution pressure that we just say fuck it and eat an entire Domino's pizza. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. But I think it's still really good to set intentions, to set ourselves up for the feelings we'd like to have so we can align our energy with what we actually want. And 2024 is a pretty significant year to do just that. But before we get started, I have a few announcements with another special announcement at the end of this episode, especially if you are into manifesting and intention setting like me. So here we go. In October of 2024, I'm hosting a group trip to Bali, and you are invited. We're going to be visiting monkeys and ancient temples and taking cooking classes and fully immersing ourselves in the Balinese culture. It's going to be so freaking fun. This is a perfect opportunity to make friends and gain confidence through group travel. Spots are limited, so click the link in my show notes to secure your spot. All you need is a 25% down payment on the trip, and then you can pay off off the rest of the trip on your own schedule throughout the year, which is why I launched early so everyone had time to plan and budget. Girls, gays, and couples of all ages are welcome. The second announcement is that I'm officially on Cameo, so you can request a video message from me as a gift, or if you just want a pep talk before a job interview, you want your own daily baddie affirmation, some advice, a birthday wish, I can even lead you through a meditation if you're into that. Whatever you want, I can provide. Unless you want a picture of my feet, because that's an extra fee. Just kidding. <laughs> Click the link in my show notes to request your video today. And my third and final announcement is I'm taking a little break from recording the podcast. Don't worry, I will be back, possibly with a new name, but that's to be seen. January is already gearing up to be a pretty busy month for me, and I just need to focus on a few projects. But my goal is to be back in February with some juicy dating episodes. So stay tuned on my Instagram, where I'll be announcing the next air date. Okay, let's get into this. So the coolest thing I think about 2024 is it's the year of the wood dragon, according to the Chinese Zodiac, which basically means that 2024 will be a year of action of confidence, determination, ambition, personal growth, and flying fucking high. These last two years, if you haven't noticed, have been a little hard to get things going. But in 2024, it will contain a lot of delicious energy to use to change your current situation because change will come easier and every action will have a greater impact. This is all the more reason to set our yearly intentions and take advantage of this fucking energy, bitch. I found a really great video to explain this in more detail, so I'll link that below in the show notes, but definitely check it out. So the problem that I have with resolutions is that we're setting a goal from a place of yearning rather than being. And setting intentions gives us the energetic framework to achieve those goals naturally, it's also way less pressure and a lot more fun. So to be clear, an intention is different than an affirmation or manifestation. An intention is a statement of what is. It's a direction that you set yourself in versus an affirmation that positively supports that direction. And a manifestation is the physical consequence of aligning with that direction. Does that make sense? So let's use weight loss for an example, because it's pretty easy. Let's say you want to actually lose 30 pounds. That's a really great attainable goal, and it's good to have a benchmark number you want to aim for, sure. But have you ever, have you ever like worked out so freaking hard for months and dieted and basically starved yourself and lost weight out of sheer willpower only to gain it back within a year? 
When this has happened to me, it was solely due to the fact that I didn't set my energy up right first. I was making my food choices out of desperation to lose weight. I was working out because I felt like I had to. And I would punish myself if I didn't. And the actions were being very forced. They weren't a natural consequence of who I was and the conscious choices I was making. See, I didn't set myself up properly with good intentions to align my energy with my desires. So let's align our frequency first. An intention for the ultimate goal of weight loss could sound something like this. I cultivate conscious choice making and awareness to aid in my physical health and well-being every day in every way possible. So let's break it down. Conscious choices are what result in a healthy lifestyle, right? Which will naturally lead to a 30-pound weight loss. Our awareness of those choices that one slice of cake rather than the entire fucking cake, is the groundwork to cultivate longer lasting habits. And some affirmations to positively support these intentions would be, I am healthy. I love my stomach. I love my tight, juicy dumper. (laughs) Moving my body makes me feel sexy. The food I eat nourishes every cell in my body. I'm using losing weight as an example, but if you are really wanting to lose some weight, you can implement a little trick with me because I'm doing this personally. Before I eat or drink any food this year, I'm going to literally set my intention for that food. So before I eat my mashed taters and gravy, I'm just going to say, thank you so much, taters and gravy, for nourishing my body, soul, and mind. I am going to so enjoy you. That way, I'm setting a positive intention for that food before it even enters my body. It's kind of like that experiment that people did with the water. Like a one group of people told a glass of water it was ugly and that they hated it. And another group of people said, oh, I love you. I love you, water. You're so beautiful. And the actual molecules of the water literally changed. Each one was different. So I'd rather just put good molecules in the food before I eat it, right? (laughs) I'm such a scientist. Anyway, back to the point. So another example could be making more money. So if you're a business owner and you have goals you want to achieve, which result in a higher income, your intention could sound something like this. I cultivate financial freedom And embrace positive abundance every day in every way possible. Financial freedom is the feeling of not having to worry about money, right? And ultimately, when we want to make more money, that feeling is the goal. And embracing positive abundance is important because abundance (laughs) doesn't always have to be in the form of money. It can be in the form of business opportunities, and it's important to see and embrace those opportunities as they come. So now that we have a couple tangible examples, let's do it ourselves. Grab a piece of paper and pen if you can, and let's write down some tangible goals first. Don't hold back. Just write down some attainable goals you can achieve within the year. Once you're finished, I'll take you through an intention-setting exercise. But first, let's hear from our sponsors that make this podcast possible. Red light therapy can cost an arm and a leg, but Huga Health has made at-home red light therapy devices affordable and effective. Using red and near-infrared light, Huga devices stimulate your cells to produce more energy, improve the elasticity and collagen production in your skin, grows your hair, lowers inflammation, decreases muscle pain, and so much more. As a skincare junkie myself, I've been using my Huga devices for over three years. I love my Pro 300 device, which I use for five minutes a night before applying all of my lotions and serums. Click the link in my show notes and use code Mandy for 10% off your Hugo Red Light device. Herbal Face Food is the most potent anti-aging skincare product on the market, period. And I should know because I've been using it for months and I've literally been obsessed. Herbal Face Food isn't a magic potion. It's simply the best of plant science at work. No fillers, no chemicals, no BS. The powerful potent serum is packed with antioxidants that heal your skin at a cellular level from the outside in and addresses the top signs of aging in three days or less. 
I personally noticed a huge difference in my skin texture and the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles when I combined both the Serum One and the Cure to my routine. My skin tag on my neck actually fell off as well. It was gross, but amazing. So I definitely recommend um, click the link in my show notes and use code Mandy Brook for 20% off your first order. Mandy with a Y, Brooke with an E. Okay, so you got a couple attainable goals written down. Now it's time to identify the person you need to become to achieve those goals. For example, for me, I personally want to continue building my business and community. I have a few projects in mind that I want to accomplish, and I'd like to make more dough. So the person that I'll have to become is someone who is, one, clear in their direction, Two, someone who is curious and open to change. And three, someone who isn't weighed down by financial stress. So my intention for 2024 is the following. I cultivate financial freedom, clarity, and curiosity every day in every way possible. If you don't have your intentions yet, that's completely okay. My spiritual teacher, Chandresh Bardwaj of the Leela Gurukul podcast, says an amazing intention that covers pretty much all bases is one that mentions calmness, courage, and clarity. So when in doubt, you can use this intention. I cultivate courage, calmness, and clarity every day in every way possible. I'll link his podcast below in the show notes as well if you want to discover new stuff. But Let's sit back. I want you to close your eyes and keeping your goals in mind, I want you to imagine the person that you're going to be when those goals are accomplished. What are they dressed like? What do they look like? What is that person feeling? What is that person saying? to other people and to themselves. Take your time with it. Visualize that person. Write your adjectives down. And those are the key terms that are going to be in your intention for the year. If you got to the end of this episode, then you're in luck because I have another little announcement. So I'm putting together a course right now. It's a mini course that will be the ultimate mindset reset. It will be a longer version of some of the podcast episodes I've already done on manifestation, on intention setting, and it will include workshops, guided meditations, daily baddie sessions, and way more. So if you're interested in this, drop your email in my email list below in the show notes to be notified when it's released. And my goal is it'll be pretty soon. (laughs) So if you love this podcast, please share and review it so it becomes more visible to besties like you. Until next time, be a fucking delight, bitch. See you soon.